Hey guys, we are here at Books of Wonder in Manhattan, in New York City, and we're here to meet Mark Brown and R.L. Stein. We are so excited. They're actually right behind Laura's head. Are they? Yeah. And we were gonna like film the whole like train ride in and everything. It was chaotic. Yeah, actually we, uh, we messed up big time we, we big time. and we went on the wrong train we went on the wrong train and we got here literally two minutes before after. this all started but yeah. it all worked out it's okay that's just why we don't have any fun b-roll of us on the train coming into the city but we are here to meet mark brown and rl stein they actually released a book that's why they're here to do a signing it's their second collaboration together so we're gonna meet them and uh we're so excited and happy to have you guys join along as well. You get a number ticket at the register. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Yay. Here is the new book, right? Yeah. How exciting. I love it. Sweet. And then look, there's more um, Mark Brown books. I have a cute. I think I'm going to get two. You guys who? Oh look, Janine, they have the other one. How cute, we also have the other one. And Janine brought Welcome to Dead House. My, my other book. Yeah, I do. So exciting. We are so excited. Two of our very favorite people are here today. R.L. Stein. Author of Cruise Pumps, Stein Tinglers, Robert's Pale Kids, and now why did the monster cross the road? And it's a question we've all been asking. And the amazing Mark Brown. Why did the monster cross the road? To bite someone on the other side. Yes. That's yeah, pretty well, obvious, well. right? Now, I'm, I made a living writing joke books for years. One year I wrote 101 dog jokes and 101 school cafeteria jokes. It's a kid's joke. Yeah. Okay. What do you get when you cross a dog with a frog? Uh, you get a dog that can lick himself from across the room. <laughs> it's a kid's joke. Come on. <laughs> the first book I wrote was Arthur's Nose. You know, it became a series of books and then a television series that kids watch all around the world. It's it's not a very good story to share with no, someone. No, we can't. We can't send you out I, I to talk to young that. authors. <laughs> it's the first thing Mark ever did after school. And he had no rejections, no, <laughs> no long years of suffering. He was a hit. <laughs> Which Arthur character would be most likely to have read all the Goose Goose books? Uh, well, that's a good question. What, did you hear that? Was the question? Which Arthur character would be most likely to have read all the Goosebumps books? <laughs> oh, probably D.W. because she's fearless. <laughs> she's a combination of my three younger sisters. <laughs> Look out. <laughs> that's funny. I was just telling them about my son, Matt, whose claim to fame is that he never read a Goosebumps book. <laughs> the right age and he just he knew it would make me crazy right? and so he never read one he read Matt read only Garfield comics his whole childhood that's all he read Gar he had all the Garfield collections every night he'd be reading Garfield one night one oh, night for <laughs> <So> what <laughs> what did you do <laughs> One night we looked in on Matt and he was reading Calvin and Hobbes. He had graduated. <laughs> we were so proud of him. Pinky Barnes was this kid. Um, his name was Clarence Jordan. He used to torture us at recess. Uh, Mr. Ratburn was my seventh grade algebra teacher. And I keep waiting for letters from their attorney. <laughs> This is not going to end well. <laughs> All right, Janine, so we just uh, did a little Q&A. And I think we're going to get our books signed in a bit. Yep. They're so cute They're together. So cute, yeah. Quite a lot of people here. It's a really fun bookstore. Oh, that's me, though. We're next in line. Are you excited? Yeah. <laughs> 
Are you excited? I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. So Laura, you just met those two over there. They're Mark Brown so cute. And Arl Stein. It's so funny. Arl Stein is think? hilarious. And it's really fun to meet Mark Brown. He's so sweet. They're both so like nice and it's really so nice. fun. Yeah. yeah, they signed our books and they signed my um or Janine's copy of Haunted Mask. And it was really fun. It's a really nice bookstore. I wish we were closer so we can come here more often, but it was a lot of fun. It's really cute. It's um it's got a lot of vintage books here. Yeah. It's also uh, specifically just a children's um bookstore too. Yes. So yes. I don't even know if we mentioned this is Books of Wonder on 17th Street in Manhattan. Okay guys, I think we're gonna head out and grab a bite to eat. Right, Janine? Yeah. Janine hasn't eaten. I was starstruck. We were starstruck. Yeah. Mark Brown is so cute. I was like, oh my goodness, I'm I'm in front of Mark Brown. <laughs> legends. Absolute legends. So we're gonna explore Manhattan a little bit. We'll hang around for a little bit. And uh yeah, take you guys along. So we did a very brave thing and asked if we could have the this is just a piece very of paper that they uh basically display in the store and we did ask if they could get it signed but they're wrapping up and mr stein's uh wrist is starting to hurting him so we did not get it signed but we're gonna bring it home and maybe even frame it how fun probably frame it definitely yeah we are going to rosa mexicana actually never been here but there's a lot of people out here do you want to eat outside or inside outside okay so we've got chips and salsa, which I didn't even realize we were going to get. Yeah, you didn't realize either. But we're still getting guac, okay. There we go. A nice looking salsa. Good. A good chip, a good salsa? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I really like the outside dining. It's like a beautiful day out. It is so nice out. It was pouring the past like week, mm -hmm. but we got some nice chips and some nice weather. We did get the guac. Thoughts? Spicy? Yeah. Um, it's seasoned really well. Mm -hmm. Got a lot mm -hmm. of garlic flavor, a lot of onion in there. Right, right. It's really good. It is pretty good. And you know what makes it even more special? The little vessel it comes in. It's actually got a lot of cilantro in it, which I do love. Love cilantro. We're just like budding food critics on YouTube. I mean, we just have so much to say. Yeah, and it's great because we ordered the same thing. So we get to both review the same thing instead of ordering two different things that might be more, you know, interesting to review. Let it be known that like salad is one of my favorite foods and the salad looks pretty good. We both got the same salad. We got it with chicken on it. I think it comes with like some type of like ranch on it, I think. I think it was like a chipotle ranch or something. Oxaca cheese. Oh. Well, it looks good. I'm gonna try it. It's a very good salad. The chicken on its own is delicious. And then um, everything with it has a little bit of citrus in there. Mm -hmm. Chase that citrus? Not quite. Not yet. Really got a bite. Um, yeah, no, the little bite that I took was pretty good, but yum. She takes a couple bites. She's dissecting the flavors. I am. It's really good because like I'm not a huge ranch like creamy dressing type of person. Like I like an acidic dressing. That's like my favorite. So given the fact that it's creamy, it's quite good. I do like it. I think the chicken adds a lot of flavor to it. What would you give it on a scale of 1 to 10? Uh, you know, it's really good. Mm -hmm. I'd give it a solid 8. Wow. Yeah. It's got like a lot of different textures, which yep. I've been enjoying. Yep. Crunchiness from the tortilla strips. Um, it's also got like a nice mix of, um, uh, I don't know what I was saying. It's also, it's also nicely dressed. It's not over overdressed. Um, would you say there's diversity? There's definitely diversity here. Not as much as uh, I would like. No, actually, the perfect amount here. Um, a good amount of diversity? Yeah, I think, you know, the dressing's nice. It's a little, it's creamy, but it's also a little bright, a little acidic. Yeah. It's kind of nice. Yeah. And I like the mix of flavors here. I like the chicken, it's a little spicy, you know. Very nice. It's a good, it's a good salad. Look, it's coming out of the, I guess it's a, yeah, isn't that crazy? It's coming like straight out of a building?
That was really exciting. It's amazing how such a big truck can like make a turn like that, you know? It's wild that it's just like in that building. Like I would have yeah. thought they come yeah. from like, I don't know, like not in Manhattan. I don't know. I, I've lived here for like four years and I don't think I ever saw, saw one like coming out of a building. I guess so. I just never really, I never really saw it emerge. I don't know. I thought that was really exciting. Okay, Laura. Yeah, I was just really, I was really know. interested in this firehouse that we just saw, the truck matter, because look how like old looking it is. I just, I, I was saying how like, yes, we've seen firehouses in Manhattan, but they're usually like big garages. I've never seen like a tiny little door like that. So anyway, I looked it up. This firehouse was, um, I guess, built in 1895. Wow, 1895. Isn't that incredible? 1895? 1895. It's one of the earliest style of firehouses in Manhattan or New York City. Um, and it's actually a historic landmark. So I think that is so interesting mm -hmm. and really tickles my brain. And we're just sitting across from it. We wouldn't even have noticed until that uh, fire yeah. truck came out. Crazy. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, so lunch was very good. Yeah, it was really good. And now we're going to a little tasty. shop. It was tasty. Um, that we used to go pretty often, right? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say, I would say we went a handful of times. Right. It's a really cute shop called Fish's Eddie's, and um, we haven't been in a while, so we're gonna head in. So their whole thing is, I guess, like dishware. You can call it vintage glove molds. Cool. Wow. That's pretty cool. Kitchen gloves. Yeah. Pretty much. That's pretty much exactly what I was looking for. That's okay. Oh, look, Janine, little cake stands. Cute. Um, get one maybe if you want. Not for $62, but yeah. This is the stuff we thrift. That's true. <laughs> that is pretty. 54. Yeah. It's a fun store. If you didn't know, Laura really likes chickens. And uh, there's some chickens right there. I like those chickens. She likes those chickens. I don't remember it being this visually stimulating. Uh, that is nice. This reminds us me of the bowl we have at home. Yeah. I like this plate. Wow. All the restaurant wear you could ever yeah. ask for. That's true. Be fun. I wonder if we're gonna pass the flat iron. We might. Flat iron building is one of my favorite buildings in Manhattan. After the I think Chrysler building. No, I like the Chrysler building. I'm joking. Oh. <laughs> I mean, no, no hate on anyone who loves the Empire State Building. No, I just was playing that because I, I knew what building was your favorite. Oh, uh, I see. Yeah, I think we need the flat iron. Actually, it might be right around the corner. I don't remember the exact uh, street it's on. Wow, I can't believe we're in Manhattan. We used to be here every day. It's wild. I don't think I could ever live in Manhattan again, but if any of you guys watching have been to New York City, Drop an apple in the comments or live here. Or live here? Yeah. Drop a drop an apple in the comments. We'd love to know. Speaking of Janine, Empire State Building's right there. 
Did you know that? Um, well, I was staring at it. Now, yeah, that is the Empire State Building. They guess they're doing work on it. Um, oh, they're the doing work on the flat iron too. It's right here, Janine. The Wizarding World of Harry Potter. I've never passed it before. Oh wait, can we pull over? I just want to like stare at it from the side. Oh wow. Do I go in? Do I want to go in? I do and I don't. Is this the flat iron right here or am I just going? Do you want to go in? Do you? Yeah, sure. Okay. okay. I also don't know if you're allowed to film. I would imagine you're able to. What is this thing called? The candy shop. I don't know what it's called. This is just the, oh, the cardboard. cardboard box, but oh. the tin is 20. I see, I see. Oh. Interesting. Yeah. I remember seeing, um, seeing this when I'm watching YouTube videos when I opened up. Yeah. And um, it, lo it looks different. Yeah. It's a bit bigger. Oh, uh, small. <laughs> like, it's a bit bigger than I remember it. Is this butterbeer? Janine, look, it's the, um, it's the glass version. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite mug is the plastic butterbeer mug from, like, Universal Studios, which I thrifted. <laughs> Here's the glass version. I like to drink Diet Coke out of it. That's fun. Butterbeer. Mm. I love this little plate. Oh, Honey Dukes, that's the name of it. Excuse me. It's only $4. It's not bad. No, it's, it's nice. No, I don't really care either way. Okay, we're gonna cut it short here. Um, it's a weekend, it's so crowded. Yeah, but really cool. We're ever back here on a weekday. This would be cool to check out in more detail. Are you sporting our No Pumpkin Left Behind merch in Manhattan of all places? to wear it uh, last year when we met Oral Stein. I was wearing last year's shirt. Uh -huh. So this year I had to, of course, wear this year's yeah, shirt. Yeah, I saw how he was like, hey, I like your No Pumpkin Left Behind t-shirt. Where'd I you know. get it? And what'd you tell him? I said, you gotta get it on shinybrightdoggo.com. Mm. <laughs> so this is um, Madison Square Garden right here, the sort of plaza you guys are seeing. One of my favorite parts, parts, parks in Manhattan. What did I say, Madison Square Garden? Yeah. I meant to say Madison Square Park, which is one of my favorite parks. Janine and I used to come here a lot. Yes. And uh, it's a cute little park, but on the weekends it's quite loud, I guess. Maybe I've just outgrown the city. Look, it's a Lego store. Lego store over here. That's cool. Um, I think we just go straight. I do want to say though that Janine, this was the Flatiron Building. We're right under it. It is. This is the corner of the Flatiron Building right here. You can see it sort of goes in a diagonal two different ways. And I just got like peed on by a building. Oh. Sorry. This is the part of uh, Madison Square Park that we're more familiar with. Um. I don't know what I was going to say. And up there is the Empire State Building. We're pretty close to it, actually. Look at this sign, guys. Superior Forest. Amazing. Yeah, I got it. That's amazing. 
What'd you get? So I got uh, the brown sugar, boba, milk tea. Um, and look at that little tiger on the front. Cute. That was fun. And Janine got a classic milk tea. Yep. Looks yummy. I gotta shake it up. It has the boba on the bum. Yeah, I got mine without boba. Fun. Thank you guys so much for joining us in today's vlog as we went to go meet Mark Brown and R.L. Stein. We we're so happy to meet the two and to get some of their signatures on our vintage books as well as their new book, Why Did the Monster Cross the Road? It was so fun. We hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for joining us. See you next time. Bye. Bye.